Hi guys, today we will be learning about Vibrio polari. Coming to the general properties, they are gram negative organism and uh, their peculiar feature is that they are curved bacteria that is comma shaped. They are curved bacteria. As you can see in the picture given, they are comma shaped and they are oxidase positive they require alkaline media to grow and they have uh, pili all over the body and a single polar flagellum the flagellum also you can see in the image given then they are facultative anaerobes that means they can uh, dwell they can survive in the absence of oxygen and they cause cholera these are the general features of this Vibrio cholerae. They are gram, gram negative. Gram negative means they give pink color on gram staining. And the other important feature is that they are comma shaped bacteria. Coming to the disease caused by this Vibrio cholerae, the disease is cholera and uh, its transmission. Transmission is from fecal to oral root that is uh, by consumption of untreated sewage water or raw or undercooked fish and shellfish that dwell in this um, untreated water the another reason for this uh, cholera is that improper hygiene so the cholera it is common in developing countries that is when because there is no poor sanitization practices and uh, undeveloped sewage treatment facilities it is a contagious infection which leads to gastroenteritis and a watery diarrhea which is the peculiar feature of this cholera and it in turn leads to rapid dehydration and may it, and it may become fatal the people uh, they are at risk are that those with low gastric acidity coming to the pathogenesis of this vibrio cholerae when this vibrio cholerae enters the stomach by consuming this contaminated food or something like that uh, it shut down the protein production to conserve energy and nutrients and to survive in the acidic environment in the stomach. In stomach we have acidic environment and to survive in that an environment, Vibrio cholerae shut, shuts, shuts down their protein production. And eventually it reaches the intestine and uses its flagella to move towards the intestinal walls and to propel through the mucus layer that lines the intestine and Finally, they attach to villi on the surface of the epithelial cells of intestine. Villi, uh, they are finger-like projections which are present on the epithelial cells of the intestinal wall. So, for these thing, three uh, things, this Vibrio cholera uses their flagella to move towards intestinal walls and to propel through the mucus layer which lines that intestinal walls and finally to attach to villi on the surface of the epithelial cells that lines the intestine. Once they attaches to villi, there they multiply and produce toxins. Then these toxins enter the epithelial cells of the intestine but not Vibrio cholera. Vibrio cholera, the bacterium, is not entering into the intestine epithelial cells of the intestine but the toxins they are produce they are producing enters the epithelial cells coming to the toxins uh, the toxins produced depends on the strain of vibrio cholerae there are different strains of vibrio cholerae some strain produce toxins that are not um, any not fatal like not of that that won't cause any or mild symptoms and some other strains they produce the toxin cholera enterotoxin or cholerogen 
that produce significant symptoms. Thus, the, the, when this cholera enterotoxin or cholera agent enters the epithelial cells of the intestine, the, as a result, this G protein gets permanently active. G, G protein is present in the epithelial cells and this G protein is uh, permanently activated by this cholera enterotoxin. It in turn, this G, the activation of G protein uh, in turn keep activating the adenylate cyclase which is a membrane bound protein. This G protein activates adenylate cyclase. This leads to the overproduction of cyclic AMP which is a enterocellular secondary messenger. G, the activation of G protein leads to the activation of adenylate cyclase which in turn leads to the overproduction of cyclic AMP and this causes the increased secretion of chloride and sodium ions into the lumen of the intestine. This overproduction of cyclic AMP causes the increased secretion of chloride and sodium ions into the lumen. This results in the destruction of osmotic balance between the intestine and the surrounding tissue due to the uh, secre over secretion of this chloride and sodium ions it leads to the destruction of this osmotic imp os leads to the osmotic imbalance between intestine and the surrounding tissues as a result water bicarbonate potassium and etc rush into the intestine intestinal lumen to make up this uh, osmotic imbalance, the water, bicarbonate, potassium, etc., rush into the intestinal lumen, and all of this causes uh, leads all of this lead to the development of symptoms. And coming to the symptoms, uh, the main symptoms are vomiting and watery diarrhea. Vomiting and high amounts of watery diarrhea and uh, the stool may contain increased concentration of sodium potassium chloride and bicarbonate ions and live vibrio cholera bacteria will be there in the stool the important feature of this cholera is that uh, the rice water diarrhea that means the flux of mucus layer, layer of the intestine will be present in the stool so that is a uh, it it resembles the rice in water that is why it is known as rice water diarrhea no fever pain or cramping fever pain or cramping will not be there uh, and the incubation time means the time required for the vibrio cholerae after entering into our uh, intestine to develop the symptoms it may take hours to two to three days Severe dehydration and depletion of electrolytes can happen 4 to 12 hours after first bout of diarrhea or vomiting. And this leads to uh, several symptoms like disorientation, dry mouth, swollen tongue, sunken eyes, cold clammy skin, shriveled or dry hands and feet. These are the symptoms. Uh, after, uh, because of this uh, vomiting and watery diarrhea, severe dehydration and depletion of electro electrolytes will be there and it leads to these symptoms. The further, the severe fatal complications are metabolic acidosis. Metabolic acidosis means increase the acidity of blood. It is due to the low level of bicarbonate ions as they are lost through the um, stool. The other uh, fatal complication is that muscle dysfunction. It is due to the low level of uh, potassium ions. Headache, poor balance, seizures and coma 
and eventually leads to coma. It is due to the low level of sodium and chloride ions. All these ions are lost through the stool. So, uh, as a result of the loss of these ions, these severe complication may occur. Metabolic acidosis, muscle dysfunction, uh, headache, poor balance, seizures, and eventually leads to coma. Then lab diagnosis. For lab diagnosis, stool sample is taken and when it is cultured, it is cultured in thiosulfate citrate by salts sucrose agar that is TCBS agar. Uh, it will give yellow colonies in TCBS agar. The treatment uh, for treatment antibiotics are given in extreme cases. The antibiotics uh, employed are tetracycline, ciprofloxacin, ofloxacin, etc. Thank you for listening.